Well, as you know, there uh, were reports, reports from Cuba that itself were hard to get, but there were reports of considerable tension and even terror in Havana that the Cuban population was pretty terrified of the whole thing. Do you think those reports are so? It might be, but from what I saw, I didn't just see anything happening there. It was very quiet. We were right in the heart of Havana, and we had gone all over Havana doing business. We had been driven all over to different warehouses examining tobacco, and I didn't see any. But the only thing you did see was people in uniform, definitely, and all the militia were there. Men were training all over the place. What kind of reports did you hear from outside Havana? We didn't hear any reports from outside Havana. The news was cut off then? Th there was no news at all during the whole time it was until we received a phone call from my wife. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Sir, can you give us your name? A Canadian citizen, I understand. That is correct. I'm from Montreal, and uh, we have a cigar factory there, the Allied Cigar Corporation. In Cuba? In uh, Canada, Montreal. And we went down to Cuba to buy tobacco. You were in the factory. You were in Havana when the invasion was on. What was it like? Well, there was uh, a lot of jitters at the beginning, and uh, uh, there were a few planes that flew over Havana, and they seemed to have uh, uh, done some uh, shooting. The people in Havana certainly uh, uh, got very strong behind Castro when that happened. They said, whoever it is that can do bombing like that on a, on a, on a helpless city certainly doesn't deserve any support from mm -hmm. them. After the, after the bombings were over and the invasion actually began, news was cut off. How did you find out that there was an invasion on? Well, it was uh, common knowledge around the city of uh, Havana that there's an invasion going on in seven different places. Were there lots of rumors? Lots of reports? Well, uh, reports, there weren't too many of that, bec but uh, uh, news did come out once or twice a day concerning the invasion and how it was... Uh, going on uh, in uh, it seems to have started in Zapata mm -hmm. where they were trying to get onto uh, off the beachhead onto a road which was surrounded by swamp and uh, the people uh, there were they they supposed to have had about 300 Cubans defending that and they did a mighty fine job of it because they they wouldn't let them get through what did you yourself do while the invasion was on did you have to stay pretty close to your hotel or could you go out in the street oh we were out in the street there was nothing uh, out of the ordinary in Havana. We carried on our business, same as usual. You did? Yes. Did you find any signs of anti-American feeling? Did you speak English on the street, and did people stop and seem irritated? No, not at all. As far as I'm concerned, there wasn't, uh, there was, there wasn't any anti-American feeling there. Mm -hmm. The Cuban people uh, still like the Americans. They love the Americans, and they hate to see these things going on. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. did try to make it, uh, they bombarded, and uh, they suspended the flight because of that and because they shot the airport, you know? Did you see any prisoners? A massive rally in Havana's Civic Plaza, beginning before dawn, attended by hundreds of thousands, and the key figure of the occasion, Fidel Castro himself. Standing with his top aides, Castro viewed a demonstration that in many ways had the earmarks of May Day in Moscow, the peace of symbol made familiar in the Soviet orbit. Banners. Major leaguers in color. So start your day a little bit better with post cereals and start collecting your free baseball trading cards today. Castro's Cuba. A massive rally in Havana's Civic Plaza beginning before dawn, attended by hundreds of thousands and the key figure of the occasion, Castro himself. Castro viewed a demonstration that in many ways had the earmarks of May Day in Moscow. 
the peace dove symbol made familiar in the Soviet orbit. Banners proclaiming a socialist Cuba and the first socialist revolution in the hemisphere. The occasion was used for bitter denunciations of the United States. The TV announcer calling President Kennedy the biggest of the imperialist worms, worms to be crushed by Cuba. The turnout for May Day was undoubtedly huge, but not purely voluntary. A Cuban TV announcer saying that those who stayed at home would be labeled publicly as imperialist worms themselves. With all segments of Cuban life represented in the demonstration, including war wounded, this was Castro's big display of his power over the Cuban people. CBS News, Key West.